Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's The Cube. Covering Red Hat Summit 2017. Brought to you by Red Hat. In 1993, two years before the height of Microsoft's dominance and amidst the sea of Unix competitors, Red Hat was founded. And the company baked over the course of about 20 years and became a dominant open source company and has leading the trend toward cloud and hybrid cloud and containers. Welcome to Boston, everybody. Welcome to Red Hat Summit. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. I'm here with Stu Miniman and Rebecca Knight, uh, my co-hosts for the week, folks. Great to see you guys. Dave. Stu, this is your hundredth uh, <laughs> Red Hat Summit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's only my fourth because it's the fourth of the Cube, thirteenth year of the show itself, Dave. But uh, great to be back here in Boston, you know, our home stadium for Rebecca, you and me. So uh, glad to have it. a little gloomy today, but it's supposed to be nice weather. By the time they take four thousand of the six thousand attendees here to Fenway on Wednesday, it's supposed to be some nice weather. Beautiful New England Red Hat Summit this week, OpenStack Summit next week. So great to be in the hub. And Rebecca, yeah. um, I felt like well, first of all, great to be working with you. Uh, first time for us uh, together. I thought the open was right in your wheelhouse. They, they opened with a video uh, and the theme was Can Machines Think? What did you make of that? So what really strikes me about this conference is that it's about the technology, it's about the new, the digital transformation that, that Red Hat is, is helping facilitate all these companies making, but it's also about really reimagining the workplace of the future. And uh, the theme this year is about the individual, empowering the individual. So much of what we're going to hear is about how do we engage developers to, to to, to make these, to make this digital transformation for these companies, how do we give them the, the tools they need? Not only just the technology, but also the change in mindset and the change in behaviors that they need to collaborate with others, uh, not only within their own teams, but within different parts of the organization to make these changes. So Red Hat's been on a tear. Uh, for anybody who follows the company, uh, they do about 2.4 billion dollars uh, a year in revenue, but more importantly, three billion dollars in bookings. What, unlike many companies who are doing a shift from from legacy, you know, trying to, to keep alive their, their old business and, and bring up the new business. Red Hat has a number of tailwinds, and one of those is its subscription business. Take a company like Oracle, for, in, for instance, or IBM that's shifting from a, a, a model of upfront you know, perpetual license into a subscription model. Red Hat, Stu, has always been there, and you're seeing it in the numbers, a billion dollars plus in, on, the, on the balance sheet. Just really great momentum, the stock price is up. What's your take on yeah, all Yeah, I mean, Dave, we've watched so many companies and technologies where you have this you know, huge wave of hype, and then you know, how does revenue go? Does it follow, does it peak, and then does it crash? Linux is one of those kind of slow burn growths. I mean, I remember back, I started working with Red Hat back in 2000, and when I talked to enterprises back then, it's like, hey, are you using Linux? They're like, no, and they're like, wait, Bob in the back corner, he's been using <laughs> Linux stuff, and he's yeah. doing cool stuff. And I watched over the next you know, five to 10 years, it was the slow growth. It just kind of permeated every corner of what we did. Um, I've mentioned when we do this show, it's like you know, Red Hat, you know, a you know, $15 billion market cap, whatever, but we wouldn't have Google if it wasn't for the Linux adoption in the world today, so much of the internet is based on that, and uh, you commented during the keynote, Dave, you look at you know, the developer wave, the cloud wave, uh, you know, uh, containers, you know, the, the shifting to kind of a subscription model rather than kind of the CapEx, uh, you know, all of those are things that kind of help lift Red Hat, it's where they're growing, it's why they've had 60 consecutive quarters of revenue growth. Now, it's not the 50% revenue growth like some of the cloud guys today, or not explosive, but steady, solid, their customers love them, great excitement here, you know, great geek show, uh, you know, lots of hoodies and backpacks uh, at the show here, uh, and exciting to watch, and we've got lots of new technologies and announcements and things to dig into the next Well, it's interesting, uh, you know, Rebecca, Stu and I had the pleasure, of, we were hanging out with some big MIT brains uh, last year in, in London, talking about the second machine age and how humans have always replaced machines, but, uh, or machines have always replaced humans, now it's in the cognitive world, and so you see, you know, again, the theme of this morning, a lot of it was AI related, um, and, and of course the controversy there is that as machines replace humans, it, it, it hollows out the, the core of the, the, middle <laughs> the middle working class. But the reality is, is that everything is getting digitized, and those types of skills are going to be fundamental for growth in you know, personal you know, vocations, the economy. What do you think? I, I agree completely. I think that really the future is going to be 
humans and machines working side by side together. And I mean, last year, uh, Jim Whitehurst was up, was up here mm -hmm. at Red Hat talking about how so much of what we still need to see from, from human workers is creativity, is judgment, is, is thought, is insight. And right now, machines still aren't quite there yet. And, and the, the question is, teaching machines to think and, and really having these two beings working together, collaborating together, and, and that really is where we're, where we're seeing so things we, change. We talk all the time in theCUBE about you know, companies are essentially, all companies are becoming software companies. You know, Mark Andreessen says software is eating the world. Uh, uh, Mark Benioff said there'll be more SaaS companies coming from non-tech firms than tech firms. And behind all that, Stu, we heard a bunch of, of, of sort of geeky technologies today, but what are the things that are, that are powering Red Hat's Momentum, we talked about hybrid cloud, open source, containers, help us unpack all that stuff. Yeah, so first of all, right, what is that next kind of billion dollar opportunity? And you know, one, one of the main pieces for Red Hat is OpenShift. Now, when we first started covering this show, it was like, ah, uh, you know, we know about infrastructure as a service and software as a service, but maybe platform as a service is where it's going. And that's kind of where OpenShift was. And today, you know, PaaS, we, we said it a year or two ago, PaaS is kind of passe. Um, where OpenShift is, is a, a, a solution that creates a platform that allows Red Hat to deliver newer technologies as a service. So containers and Kubernetes, uh, I didn't hear Kubernetes mentioned in the keynote, but Red Hat is you know, the you know, largest enterprise contributor. Uh, it's basically Google, a uh, bunch of independent people, and then Red Hat is a you know, major contributor to Kubernetes, uh, helping to drive that adoption, that whole next generation application development is where you know, Red Hat is key, that m uh, migration to uh, microservices. Uh, so as we see that transition, um, it was interesting to see kind of the application discussion. It was how can we take, you know, how can we help you build those new apps, but then how do we take our existing apps? Uh, at the Google show, at this show, at some other shows, uh, it's been, you know, kind of the lift and shift movement is kind of cool again, and not cool because we're doing, it, it, it's helping to take those legacy applications, move them into a more modern era, uh, and that's where kind of OpenShift, uh, there was like the, the announcement of the OpenShift.io, uh, you know, all the tools they have from Ansible and JBoss, uh, all of these open source projects that Red Hat is very much much, uh, you know, a core part of that are going to help drive that next wave and, and help drive them. Um, there was an announcement uh, was was mentioned briefly today. I know they're going to talk more about tomorrow, but the press release went out about a deeper partnership with Amazon Web Services. I think this this is likely going to be the number one thing we talk about leaving the show, uh, which is deeper partnership to say my application can live in AWS on OpenShift or it can live in my data center on premises and it's still using AWS services with OpenShift. So that whole hybrid or multi-cloud story uh, that we build out, Red Hat's trying to make a good place why they should be there and extend for, v for AWS because we know that that's the place that they need to compete against Microsoft with all their entire Azure play, VMware, uh, trying to play that, so multifaceted, really interesting dynamics from a competitive standpoint, um, and the opportunity to be, you know, billions of dollars of opportunity uh, for a company like Red Hat. Great, all right, we've got to wrap up. We will be covering those announcements and, and others. That AWS announcement knocks down all the major clouds now. Azure, Google, AWS, uh, IBM, I guess Oracle's left, but, yeah, uh, but and, and China. Support Oracle's but, uh, application, <laughs> but yeah. But uh, in terms of clouds. All right, so keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back wall-to-wall -wall coverage here from Boston at the Red Hat Summit. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. <laughs>